We begin this half hour with one of those rare moments when a science fiction concept is about to become an everyday reality. Engineers are in overdrive building a practical car that drives itself, and they are closer than you think. Terrell Brown is here with more. Good morning, Terrell. Vanita, good morning to you. We've seen futuristic looking cars from Google, cars that can do laps on courses, but wait until you see how close cars are coming to doing it all. All right. Should I be nervous? No. All right, so let's go for a ride. Let's do it. The drive starts out like any other. So right drive. now, you're, you're driving. I'm driving, but, but any time I can just put this into autonomous, autonomous mode. Driving. And now it will do all of the driving for us. And the car us. is driving itself. Yes. So Jared Snyder is behind the wheel, here, barely. The wheel. So my feet are just sitting down here and my hands are off the wheel. And you will see that uh, it has to operate the brakes, the throttle, the steering. Uh, as well as turn signals, uh, things like that. Did you just get nervous when we pulled out into traffic you, just man. now? No. Did Not you? at all? A little Did bit. A little bit. <laughs> Snyder is a lead engineer at Carnegie Mellon <laughs> University, where a team of researchers with funding from GM have spent five years working to make this Cadillac SRX a fully autonomous vehicle. So we're coming up on a red light. And it's turning red now. And you can see the car, the, the car is stopping for the, for the traffic light. It can detect traffic lights through radio signals or from sensors on the front bumper. So you see as the green arrow happens here, the car knows about that. So the car is seeing the light and processing the information. Right. And then responding. Right. <laughs> the SUV makes all decisions involved in driving, like when to change lanes and when to stay put. How is it staying in the lanes? Uh, so if you see, if you can see on the, the, these lines drawn on the screen here, so there's the blue lines, that's the map. It knows about that ahead of time. Yeah. But the map might not be that good and our GPS might not be that good. Caution. Imagine. Entering construction zone. Uh, in that case, it saw a construction zone sign on the. So what it's doing is it's, it's actually finding the lane markings on the road and tracking those as well. Wow. It's reading road signs. It's reading traffic lights. It's reading stop signs. So the car is literally seeing and acting on everything around it. Right, that's correct. It can literally see all around itself. Raj Raj Kumar so is a professor of electrical and computer engineering and robotics at Carnegie Mellon. It has a laser and a radar behind the bumper. He showed us the hidden system of lasers, radars and cameras that give the car a 360 degree view of the road. You have to open up uh, the trunk where? All the information is filtered to a computer network which processes and commands the vehicle. They jointly communicate, cooperate, and then decide what to do. How, how long does that process take? Uh, it's making a decision 100 times a second. But how fast can these cars become the norm? In August, Nissan announced they'll have a fully autonomous car on the road by 2020, just over six years from now. A report this year found autonomous driving modes will average about 4% of the global vehicle market in 2025, rising to roughly 41% in 2030 and 75% by 2035. At least five companies say they have self-driving cars on the way. We're trying to do it with a, what, what we like to call a production viable system. So we're trying to use automotive grade sensing. We're trying to uh, maintain the aesthetics of the car. We're trying to uh, make this real. Overall problems with cars like this would be what? Uh, there's legal issues, social issues. But there's, there's a lot of things just to get this kind of technology accepted in society, I think. It was really one of the most amazing experiences that I've, I've had in Congress. Bill Schuster represents Western Pennsylvania's 9th District. He's chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which is planning a hearing on how this technology can become reality. There are 32,000 people killed on our highways today and 6 million accidents. 93% uh, of those accidents are from driver error, uh, people swerving, not paying attention. And we believe this technology, uh, once it gets into the fleet, will reduce significantly the fatalities and accidents on our highways today. But distracted driving is a really big problem today. That's right. Does this get rid of that? Uh, it doesn't get rid of distracted driving, it just allows you to be distracted. So I think if you had this car, you would be more distracted. Really? Uh, yeah, you, you, now, now you could freely check your email, you know, text message, what, whatever it is that, that people are trying to do while they drive now, they could actually focus on those tasks.
It's kind of an interesting take on it, right? Uh, some technical problems still need to be worked out. The sensors can only reach but so far, and they can be impaired by weather and lighting. One thing humans can still do better, though, as they can see farther distances. Well, you were in this car for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Did it make a single mistake? Not one. Not one mistake. And I am the epitome of backseat driving and passenger right. seat driving, and I was looking over the car as we were changing lanes. Not one thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's full on, just about 100% proof. Of course, there are things that it has to learn still. But while we were out there on the road, not one mistake. Well, aside from being excited that I could do my makeup on the way to work, <laughs> I'm curious, though, it sounds like you could do this down the road with any car. It's something that you, for six or $7,000 down the road, talking, they anticipated. Right, talking about it starting out with luxury models and then something that works its way into the market. Uh, and then there are different percentages here, but 45%, maybe 10 years, and then 75% of the market, another 20 years or so. Uh, and only six or seven thousand dollars added onto the base price of the car in order to get that. What's interesting though, these engineers mentioned, hey, look, two or three generations from now, kids may not go to driving school. It may be illegal wow. for you to drive your but, car. But if you have an accident, who's responsible? Right. Question. <laughs> yeah. Terrell Round, thank you. Sure. That was interesting stuff.